Now, certification is another opportunity that is available to minority businesses and most minority business owners who are from the Caribbean like myself are a little bit tentative about the word minority because in our countries we are not in the minority. But the, the term minority here means access. It doesn't mean inferior, it means access. And we should really understand that it's important that minority businesses get certified. Those opportunities are available for you to be certified as a small business, as a minority business, as a woman-owned business, as a disadvantaged business, as a community business enterprise and what this does is it gives access to contracting opportunities because most of those large contracts that are let by these government agencies and by corporations they come with goals for minorities meaning if the contract is hundred thousand dollars 25 percent of that should go to minority business but if you're not a certified minority business you cannot bid on that particular contract or the prime bidder cannot come and ask you to partner with them there are a number of agencies out there that specialize in working with small and minority businesses to show them where to go, who to talk to, what's available, what to do, how to position yourself. So you really need to understand your space or the marketplace that you are planning to operate in. The, the Department of Commerce was smart enough to recognize that the, 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 the minority population of the United States is growing tremendously and it's growing because of people coming from other countries and coming over and bringing all kinds of skills and so forth but not having the know-how in terms of how to do business in the United States or how to do business in their particular city or state. And I'm a very strong proponent of the business plan because the whole process of putting a business plan together is really the essence of the business plan. It's not just the document because that is something that can get put on a shelf somewhere, but it's the process of deciding about your financing, how your sales is gonna be structured, you know, what your product is really like and how you're going to promote your product, what differentiates you from the competition, and you know, really set out your whole financial structure, how much money you have, whether you need to borrow, and how much and you know at what point are you going to achieve break even how you're going to be profitable in this particular venture because you need to have somebody who understands marketing you need to have somebody who knows and understands the product you need to have someone who understands how to run a business administratively you need to surround yourself with, with, with people with skills that you don't have to complement you. Yeah. It's always important that you have legal help and that you have accounting services. There are a number of organizations that will help you with your um, accounting records and so forth but it's always a good idea for you to have a CPA you know who can look over your stuff and make sure that you're doing things the right way people call me all the time why miss Gilla wants to start a thing you know <laughs> I say that's wonderful yeah I can help you start your thing but you really have to follow the rules you know that things are a lot more structured and even in Jamaica it's getting to be a lot more structured now and not just Jamaica but in other parts of the Caribbean where we tend to just get up and, and do our thing some of the downfalls would be you know your business would probably not 
not be strengthened the way it needs to be when you have help and when you are set up properly. You know, and the next thing is that people take advantage of you. You know, it's because you're, you're not formalized and you know you get kicked to the curb for somebody else who probably is not even as good as you, but because they're more organized, they get the opportunity because they're set up and they get taken through the right doors and you're out there still struggling and you are the one with the smarts for the particular idea or the particular product. I have seen some folks from the Caribbean that come over and uh, because it's so easy to do what they do because they, they're skilled at their craft but they don't understand the marketplace and so they start out and they have a grand opening and everything looks good and then because they didn't really take the time to research and understand the market and the competition. Food, <laughs> you know, anything that has to do with food. Now, not everybody is good and great and successful, but there are many success stories at varying levels. I believe also, um, the, the, the beauty, so to speak, industry, hair care, and so forth. We are very, very good at that, especially black women like myself, you know, we like to get, we like to go to the people who understand our hair. Jamaican nurses are tops, and you know, they are very much in demand. Uh, accountants, lawyers, yeah, that cater specifically to the Caribbean community, they seem to do very well, immigration and those kinds of things. The Jamaica USA Chamber, for example, is trying to broaden that scope so that we get out of our comfort zone and really try to partner with other communities because other people like our stuff and the people love Jamaican food. So we, um, you know, we're not just serving Jamaicans, we're serving the broader community, but I don't think we try as hard to branch out into other communities. However, we indirectly do this by having our products in stores like Publix and Winn-Dixie and those other major uh, groceries and other kinds of stores where all kinds of people shop. Don't always have to be a business owner. Everybody's not cut out to be. Everybody's not cut out to be, yeah, because sometimes, and depending on the kind of business, you really have to be so devoted and dedicated that, you know, it, it's, it just tends to consume you.